con il Bianca Roccia eh, di Frappa. Frappa è, eh, è un acronimo per The Forward Recognition and Protection Association. E, eh, Bianca è un, un membro del management board dell'associazione, dell un'associazione che ha sede in Olanda e che è, è riuscita eh, in, in una, in una um, operazione che in Italia si è, si è cercato di tanto di realizzare, che è quella di creare una eh, registrazione del format, e un po' diverso da quello che viene operato in SIA, che è presso le, le, come opera anonima e quindi diciamo che giusta chiusa, quindi un registro diverso, e anche una forma di regolamentazione delle, delle controverse attraverso una mediazione che offre l'associazione. Quindi lascio a Bianca, a Bianca, thank you. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, 
that uh, strict rules are lacking, it means that the industry needs to come to terms by itself. We have uh, approximately 250 members worldwide, they come from all over, China, uh, uh, Turkey, uh, USA, of course, uh, Europe. Um, we are, that is very important, we are uh, non-for-profit and we are as independent as we can be, of course, but I'll explain that later. A network organization, uh, we do lobby and research, we are uh, actually every day we're here for you, for the industry, to help you with all your questions, and we develop some services, which is very handy for uh, producers to, uh, well, on their daily uh, work in the form of the industry. Um, this is our general board. What you can see here is that it, uh, it's a representation from all over the world. Korea, uh, uh, South America, uh, China, uh, Europe, etc. Uh, but do you hear me well? Is it, do you need to talk slower, louder? Okay, thank you. All the way still? You're all the way? Problem, you of course recognize this all can for be protected, and when yes, how do you execute these rights? This is the heart of what the formality from the industry is all about. Um, this is a little lineup of all the uh, services we created, and uh, um, on one there is the proper analysis service, it's rather young, but it is a very important service, and I will develop that. Uh, a little bit more uh, in the uh, slides to come. What we also created is a price calculator. So this is, you can calculate the price per territory, time slot, and genre, and of course this is an advice price. Uh, and uh, what we did is we get the information from all over the world uh, per territory, uh, um, what the price for a form fee could be. Then of course, Online help desk. Well, in fact, that's me, and uh, it's other people helping you and uh, answering your questions. And then we have the, our registration system. I also will explain that later. And then, very important also, is the Frapa Bible Generator. And that's, uh, that's uh, important because we advise you when you register an informant that you do that uh, by registering a Bible which is according to our standards. In the Bible generated means that we ask you questions that you may not think about, but they are very, very important for your registration. So it's very important that the two are being combined. And of course, we have a code of conduct, of course, and uh, we do mediation uh, uh, sometimes, and we um, also have a, uh, a partnership with WIPO, when we, when we are not able to uh, mediate ourselves. And we also deliver expert witnesses upon request. Then we are now uh, developing a contract generator. And uh, for us, of course, you know, in every territory, the contract is different. But we think that in every contract, some elements should always be mentioned in the same way. So what we want to do is just to structure the business no matter which territory you are. That's important uh, because it's a worldwide trade. Anyway, so we need to have some strict rules there. And we also provide reports. And I will talk about the uh, report that we produced with Baker McKenzie in 2017. First of all, our uh, registration system is very important. It's a closed digitalized system. As of now, nobody can enter it, not even me. And uh, so it means that when you register your format, you get a certification with a title, and it means that the, uh, the most important value is the date. I think it does not very differ so much from the SPIE, the CI, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, up until now, we do not give any information about the content or the title, of form which, which are in the database uh, uh, other than the ones than the person who actually registered it. Uh, 
um, there is a fixed price for every performance, so it's not it's because it's not a trademark registration system. We do not compare performance, so um, we have a very huge fight with a, a Chinese uh, producer uh, one year ago because they used the cert certificate as a proof that their form was original. What they actually did is they mixed up trademark registration and uh, uh, format registration. So we had to well, fight in Chinese media, which is not very easy to do. But anyway, we were able to explain that <coughs> up until now it is not possible to compare formats because that is actually the problem. How do you compare? Um, and we have, I think, over 6,000 registrations now worldwide in our system, and it's up and running uh, now for two years now. So it's working really well. And I think this has a lot to do with what we discussed here with the mock trial. And I need to compliment the organization because you were able to, to create two formats, which one is real and the other one is like fake, but you exactly describe the elements which are very in combination, which are at the heart of almost every formal discussion. So I really need to compliment you all on that one, and, uh, and it's very it's it's very hard to compare. And also, what I learned here today is that your rules from 1994 doesn't might not really help you in solving the case because they are from 1994. And the industry involved extremely, and there's so many, is so many uh, new information about how to compare formats. And I will explain you what we did uh, a couple of years ago. So what we do is uh, we created a methodology with different elements, and uh, then we describe what the differences and the similarities are, and um, we do that. You know, only. Oh, in two formats and formats. Up until now, we can we decided not to compare paper formats. It's only and formats. Um, and we provide a report, and we even provide a ranking, and um, and we say everything above eighty five percent similarity is according to us a uh, infringement or a possible infringement. But that's up to you, up to the lawyers. And you can use this report in court, the negotiation, mediation, and of course in the trading magazines, which is a very, very powerful uh, tool at, in the formal industry. And if you think, well, that is not something that I expected, this report you just put it in your drawer and you, you go ahead. We are also being asked now for, I think several times now, to prove, prove that the uh, that the accusation was false, so it also works differently. We don't care, you know. We don't care who comes to us uh, in which case. What we all only do is compare two uh, uh, episodes. So um, I'm able to uh, communicate a little bit about this because it was in the open. Actually, it was described at uh, mid performance uh, last year. This case it was between CGENM and IQ. We ran an analysis for them, and this is uh, this is what they got. This is the report. Um, so we explained what we did, how we did it, and uh, the basis of the uh, analysis is that uh, the review committee and there are representatives of there's uh, someone who uh, creates formats, who distributes formats, who produces formats, and the methodology was also produced or being. Uh, um, written by a lawyer, um, a format developer, and producing distributors. So what we try to do is always to combine all the knowledge in the market and also to create the best service. So this is how it looks like. We just describe what we see, uh, similarities, differences, and uh, we also do a uh, one-on-one -one framing uh, analysis of uh, different elements. So what you can see here in the uh, in this game show, um, well, it, it's not hard to uh, 
to realize here that actually we thought this was a very blunt infringement. It almost even looks the same. It's, it's sometimes it's just shameless, sometimes it's definite, but this was shameless. Oh. So you can see here what we do. We just put them next to one another so it's very visual. So at the end of the day, this is our infringement uh, spectrum, and we distinguish uh, different elements, uh, particularly for a game show, and then you can see their score on the, on the right. So this is what you get when you order an analysis. Um, I think probably, uh, do you have any questions about the analysis system until so far afterwards? Maybe? Okay. Then we also provide uh, reports and uh, the 2017 report is an overview uh, of the uh, 35 territory and what we try to describe is or to investigate if IP the best way is to protect your format under the current circumstances when where there is no delegate legal system. And it's, it's from 2017, but the last years, 2018, not so many cases were being brought to court which are relevant to change the, uh, the conclusions of this report. So probably we will do it again in 2021 and 2022. But we, can, we also see that a lot of cases now are being set more than ever before. And what we actually did in this uh, report also, we uh, invented a new um, definition of what a format is. It's in the report, it's also on our website. And what we try to provide the industry and also the lawyers is a very clear good definition in which every party can use it whenever they have a, a, a conflict. You can find it on the website. One of the main findings of the reports is that TV font creators are entitled to use more concept than only copyright in order to prevent uh, the copying of TV format. It's about copyright and fair competition. Trademark uh, law is involved here. Know-how is very important and of course contract uh, law. Um, way to perfect, uh, there are ways to protect the TV format is protection of TV formats as such or the protection of individual elements of the TV format. And the most effective protection may be granted in countries where courts have concluded that TV formats may be protected per se by means of copyright or unfair competition. And uh, uh, there are some examples of countries, uh, um, uh, Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, Italy, and it's Peru, Poland, Spain, Sweden, and USA. And there is a very interesting case in, coming from Spain. And we at Fraud, we say that in Spain, your format is the best protected ever in the world. So just have your main office there. Well, that's not our advice. But we have the system of um, the standard of registration is much more nervous than. Exactly. Uh, so what should you do to protect your format? We also analyzed that and uh, we came up with five bullets in 2017 describing the TV format in as much detail as possible. So what we also say is use our barrel generator, compile the different copyrightable items in the UV order, register the TV format in its version created on the development stage. In our registration system, you can, because it's online, you can also register any updates of the format. So what you see then when you have a copy of your registration is a lineup connected with the date of, of the format. So you see your own format evolving. Um, uh, create a strong title with a logo and secure your communication about the format by entering into NDAs. Afterwards, we uh, sat down and we developed some 50 more unique elements. And that's also, you can find it on our website, the 20 steps of protecting your format. Um, there's so many interesting case law, because the format industry depends on case law, actually. So, so many interesting uh, uh, cases can be found. And uh, we named uh, uh, 
uh, fuel here, but I think um, uh, what you can do also is to um, ask for a copy um, um, afterwards. Um, if you want to discuss this, I'm happy to do so. Um, but um, has anyone of you ever read this legal report? Are you aware of it? No? Okay, well, maybe you can describe some of the cases actually. So in the Brazil, a uh, very interesting case between TV Global and Animal, um, um, and the uh, verdict there was TV formats when distinguished by a current district and distinguished by a scan protected under Brazilian copyright law. Court found that TFSPT was guilty of engaging in unfair competition as well. Um, Peru, Fremantle Media uh, versus Panamericana, and the formal presentation of the program used as well as spot was original because it expressed individuality. So it was concluded that Panamericana committed intelligent uh, plagiarism of the presentation of the program. Spain, maybe you know this case, was very famous, and the court noted that the third Pasabalaca was in fact the title of the format, and as a result it was deemed that media set was infringing ITV's copyright. Um, Sheenan versus MTV networks. Uh, that was one of the first strongest cases in the USA, so that is why it is uh, being described here. And the court held that while the individual elements may not be more than standard ideas for a game show, the unique compilation in the format for the show was protectable. It was a very, very important uh, statement uh, by the court at that time. And actually, you can see uh, after 1992, uh, that the format industry actually developed more fast than it ever did before. So I think it was one of the uh, uh, first starting points for actually uh, um, feeling very confident in investing money in formats. So it really, really helped to uh, the industry. Italy, well, maybe you know this case, it was important for us. Uh, that the court deemed that the format of the TV program had sufficient elements of creativity to be protected by copyright, consisting of the matching of famous people with unknown people, selection by elimination with a combination of jury and audience votes and the judging of a prize. In Netherlands, also a very extremely uh, discussed uh, um, um, uh, case here at both court. The Court of First Instance and the Court of Appeal ruled that the form was eligible for copyright protection. And that was also one of the first times that Dutch court said that copyright was involved here when talking about formats. So, well, that was my little story, and I thank you for listening to me. Uh, if you want more information about Frauba, just it's Frauba.org. You can also send me mails. You can become a member if you want. And uh, please uh, leave me on, uh, on uh, via uh, LinkedIn, and we can have discussion afterwards, of course. In attesa della, della decisione del collegio che sta scrivendo, quindi si sono determinati e stanno scrivendo, forse chiederei a Bianca di parlare della mediation. The, uh, the settlement, how, how does it work? How, I mean, if you explain something, because it's something we don't have, so it would be interesting to know how you try to help different companies to find the settlement. Well, when Frauba come to us for mediation, it means that they um, um, it's <coughs> produces it's a very small industry. I think there are 3,000, 4,000 companies uh, worldwide developing formats at the moment. So that's not a lot. You can put them actually together in one room. So it means that you um, always meet each other, all the time, at NIP, everywhere in the world. So it is very important of not being accused of theft. And that is why now, uh, Something is changing actually with using PR 
as a tool in order to blame one another uh, just before the market starts. And that is what they do. They just, you know, put you out of the business by just accusing that your format was an infringement of another format. So it means that you're out of business even if it's not true. So PR becomes a very strong powerful uh, element now. But what we do is that when uh, producers have a feeling like, well, I want to work with them anyway, you know, afterwards, let's just ask Frappa for their opinion. And that's what we do a lot on a business level, sit down to each other, let's see how we can, you know, s settle in a way uh, that uh, at the end of the day you can still work together. That is a totally different uh, situation than when uh, lawyers are involved and, and, and the court case is already in place. Of course, all lawyers are always, you know, there. But uh, sitting down together, you know, without the knives on the table, is a very good way of settling uh, uh, deals, especially if you want to work afterwards with one another. And do you provide expertise as, as well? Do you provide expertise or? Yeah, we also provide. Yeah, we also provide expert witness, and then, um, but now with the new analysis and with providing the reports, we do that less and less because the report actually replaces the expert witness, and the report is at this moment the only um, uh, statement of an independent organization, uh, um, well, experts from all over the world sitting down together. And uh, this, at this moment, it's the most important step of, of you know, saying that it is an infringement or a possible infringement or not. So that is actually why we came up with the analysis service. Thank you. And comunque, avete delle domande che volete porre a Bianca? Yes, as authors and 
not just as producers. Everybody with a uh, format can register. We don't care about who. But no, no paper format. format. So we, we need a, a air format, pilot. No, no, you can also register the paper format, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Another question about the deposit. Do you do you do an analysis of the format before accepting the deposit, whether it is it has all the elements to be protected, or you just accept any deposit? Yeah, yeah that's it. Right. You don't make them. No, that we don't because we don't uh, uh, judge the case before we start the analysis. And I think that is the most important element of our service because we don't take sides. In this particular service, we have many services, but in this particular service, providing a report and analysis is only what you provide to us, is that's what we're going to compare. And if, and at the end of the day, we can conclude that these two, uh, that uh, uh, the material you provided us is not something that we can compare, of course, then you don't pay the whole fee, because then they don't do the analysis. Then we just say that, well, otherwise you need to come up with more or different material that, it, that is possible for us to actually compare without uh, uh, guiding you what to hand over to us. But it is for us just important to compare shows. Okay, is in English, of course, the deposit, or in, in any language and any case of comparison? Yeah, we need to give a translation in English. Yeah, we, uh, yes, if, the, if it is Chinese or from Korea, which happens a lot now, <laughs> then we ask uh, some extra for the translation. We have uh, approved uh, translators that help us. Was, was one of your comparison ever mentioned in a decision to as, as, because, for example, in Italy you have this um, advertising self-regulation body. Um, and of course, the uh, decision is not binding in any case for, for courts, but sometimes mentioned as a proof of good faith or at least of, as, as a, an opinion and, uh, that is taken into consideration by the judge in giving his judgment. Yeah. So. Well, not until now, because the service is now I think one and a half years, so we still need to, you know, more people need to come and I think one of the days it will show up in court, but what we can see now is that when we provide a report, then the two parties sit down together and they just <laughs> try to solve it. So that is, okay, that's what's happening actually. Thank you very much. Any other questions?